Hey, how's it going guys and welcome back. With the Lumen Hill Kickstarter reaching its end in the next couple of days and the demo now being live, I figured now is as good a time as any to talk about my five major hopes for the game in general. We will sort of be building off of my thoughts after playing the demo and what I've seen in terms of community feedback. Now, if you've been living under that rock I'm always mentioning, Lumentail is a monster taming RPG that focuses on having a rich story and has a pretty kick-ass 2.5D aesthetic. The best way I can briefly describe the game is like this. If you enjoy games like Nexomon or Koromon, I think that this game will be something you'll want to look at. It's definitely unique from those two and not just a carbon copy or anything like that, but I think it fits that same sort of demographic. Anyways, all that being said, as per the usual, Kickstarter will be in the description, and without further ado, let's dive in. Number five, more monster animations. Okay, so first up is something that I've seen a lot of the community ask for, and while I'm sure it's not an easy feat to add specific animations for every Animon in the game, I do think it's something that would add a lot of flavor and life. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, a lot of people have pointed out that when the Animons take damage in battle, they don't really change from their idle animations, and while this isn't anything close to a deal breaker for me, hence why it's at the bottom of the list, I do think having little animations that take place when damage is taken, and even while they're attacking, would add a lot of life to the game in general. Not much else to say about this one, pretty straightforward, so let's move on. Number four, trading. Okay, so this next point is actually included in one of the stretch goals that we have not yet unlocked during the Kickstarter just yet, but that's the ability to trade other players. Again, this is very low on the list because I truly don't think that a Mon game necessarily needs trading to be good, but the ability to trade duplicate shinies or trade for your favorite monsters adds a sense of community to the game. The reason I didn't include PvP is because I feel like a lot of monster taming games, especially in the indie scene, that add PvP end up not really having much of a PvP community just a few months later, making it difficult or downright impossible to find matches online. I think trading is a lot more casual and would be used a lot more as well. Wonder Trades could even be a really cool addition to the mix as well, and if they're worried about the game not having enough concurrent players, let's say a couple years out, they could set it up so you could like deposit a monster into the void, and then once someone else deposits one at a later time, then you'll come back with the new one. That would sort of circumvent any need to have two players accessing the Wonder Trade feature at the same time for it to work. Let me know if you guys think that would be a cool system to have. I feel like a Wonder Trading system in any monster taming game would be pretty dope. Number three, post-game content. So something I'd like to see more monster taming games incorporate is meaningful post-game content. A lot of games will lean on the monster collection and shiny hunting aspects as the sole source of post-game content. And while hunting for shinies and completing the game's compendium can be fun, I'd really like to see some challenging post-game options akin to something like the Battle Frontier or even something like the Nexomon Abyssals or Netherworld updates or something like that. Basically, content that will keep you playing after the credits roll. I feel like a lot of old school Pokemon games had this this allure to them where the credits rolling was just the beginning of the journey, whereas in recent time there's a lot less to do in Pokemon outside of the formerly mentioned activities, so yeah, I'd like to see some post-game content and it doesn't necessarily have to be what I listed here either. Number two, rewarding exploration. One thing that's been missing from Pokemon for quite some time is the idea of rewarding exploration. This goes beyond just searching the world for different monster spawns, but also finding cool items, Easter eggs, move tutors, hidden characters, challenges, and more. I'd really like to see this game have rewarding side content that encourages players to explore and see what the world has to offer beyond just the main story experience. I think the world of the Lumentail demo already showed that the devs are willing to create their game with this philosophy, having branching paths and whatnot, so I'm not exactly worried about this being absent from the game. Number one, monster customization. So finally, last but not least, we have monster customization, which I'm not talking about cosmetics. I'm more so referring to the idea that there are multiple different utilizations for each of the game's monsters, much like you see in Pokemon. For example, you can run Garchomp as a bulky offensive threat, or even as a wall breaker, or some people even run it defensively. Giving each monster multiple ways to be used adds a lot of replayability and opens the door for tons of team building options. You could also throw in something to customize monster stats, whether it be equipment or some other type of item. The one thing I don't want to see though is an IV equivalent. For those that don't know, IVs are the individual values that make each Pokemon unique based 
basically there's a random chance when you catch something that it'll have either good or bad IVs in each stat. And honestly, I feel like this is a very archaic system and just adds artificial grind to the game. There's nothing rewarding about finding hundreds of mediocre Pokemon in the wild and only being able to get anything good through breeding. Instead, I'd like to see them adopt something like Monster Sanctuary where you can attach different items that'll buff different stats. You can even have some items that kind of buff one stat but debuff another or add special passive effects and stuff like that. But yeah, there you go, guys. Those are my top five hopes for Lumintel right now. I think that the game has a ton of potential, and given how well the demo plays, I'm very confident that it's going to be a solid game regardless. That being said, what would you like to see Lumintel bring to the table? What aspects of the game are you most excited for? Definitely let me know in the comment section below. If you want to stay up to date on this game, if you want to stay up to date on the monster taming genre, definitely subscribe to this channel. We put out new videos every single day. You can check out my Twitter, Discord, and Patreon linked below. Special thanks to the patrons, especially Jim Hamilton, Drogos, Dark Persona, and Exodus, and we'll see you guys next time. Peace.